Yeah, that was a very uh, clever strategy to publicise what was the anticipated yeah. Russian playbook to potentially spike their movements. But, I mean, Putin's appeared to be a very slippery character when it comes to the pu public pro proclamations he makes. Earlier today, a Kremlin spokesman has suggested that if Luhansk and uh, Donetsk are given to the Russians or, or recognised as uh, completely separate states, and if Crimea is recognised as Russian and that uh, the Ukraine, uh, Ukraine's constitution is neutralised, that they may be prepared to put down weapons. Do you think that is Russia taking steps backwards because they're not as successful as they hoped they might be? And if we were to go down a conciliatory route, do, we, you know, do you think that Russia will just lie in wait and want to bite off more? Well, I think it's at the moment hard, given what's happened, for anyone to step back. Um, I mean, one hopes there could be a negotiated settlement at some point, but to make really strategic concessions to the Russians after what they've done is going to be very difficult for Ukraine. It's going to be very difficult for the West. Um, I mean, I can see possibly a ceasefire, some sort of extended negotiation, but to give way to the Russians on an issue of principle. Look, in my lifetime, if we, you know, if you actually, from the time that I was born in the final war of World War II, what's, Russia's invaded Finland, Hungary, Czechoslovakia, um, you can carry on, um, Georgia, uh, Azerbaijan. I mean, it, you know, it, the list goes on and on. Um, so I think it's going to be very, very difficult now for the West to accept some sort of basic concession to Russian, well, the, the, the Russian interpretation of, uh, you know, their, what you could call it their geopolitical claims or their geopolitical right. I mean, what Putin's done is quite extraordinary because, I mean, this is the same as the Anschluss. Uh, the Nazi takeover of Austria. It's like the German takeover of Sudetenland as well, the Nazi takeover. You know, where culture, language, uh, ethnicity is more uh, important or, or is seen to be the ultimate rationale and not national front, international frontiers. I mean, internationally agreed frontiers. So, you know, we are in an extraordinary situation. I mean, this, is, uh, this crisis is, is a fundamental, it's a geopolitical upheaval of huge significance. And it's difficult to see what the follow-on is going to be. And I, I mean, it's clearly going badly for the Russian military. Um, they have not done what they clearly set out to do, which was to decapitate the regime probably in 48 hours, drive down the road, Half the population would have greeted them, take over Hostomel, the main air base, land your crack troops, drive down, decapitate the governments all over in 48 hours. Well, that's clearly not happened, not going to happen. And um, I think that's what's worrying, because if the Russians can't, as it were, conduct, let's say, a conventional blitzkrieg military campaign because their logistics have broken down, their conscript troops are not fighting successfully, then, you know, we're into politics or the military politics of obliteration, rubbleization, because they've got plenty of ordnance, they've got massive kinetic power. Um, so I, I'm really, really depressed and worried as to what's going to happen next.